large number of young people making things happen in my loop. Take Joshua Danridge, for instance. He's a kid entrepreneur who believes in his community, and he wants to be an inspiration for his generation. He's a young man with a plan. I just want to own my own business. I didn't want to work for anybody else. But why put off for tomorrow if you can do it today? I said, Mom, can you help me one day to start my own business? And she said, yes. So when do you want to start? Two quick things, man. Look at the pride in this black news anchor's face. He gets to do a story in St. Louis about a kid who didn't get hit with a stray bullet, who didn't just go on a carjacking spree. Who didn't just get in a fight at school. A good kid. Look at that beaming pride on that news anchor's face. And we don't talk about this enough. Black news anchors at these stations that every night at the production meeting before the news airs where they're going over the stories and they're going on the rundown. This story's going to go first. Then we're going to go to commercial break. Then we're going to come out to commercial break and we're going to go to Sally and this part of town. And then we're going to come back to you and then you're going to switch it over to this one. All the, the production meeting before this news show. And they got to see all these stories about niggas killing each other, kids getting killed in broad daylight by stray bullets, kids getting shot up, teens committing wild crimes, and they're all black. And then you see the, the this guy's face when he finally gets to do a story about a good story. Nobody thinks about that. That black people don't like doing this shit. But this is the friggin' news. It's a lot of black people that just, you just doing the damn news. This is what's happening. And who thinks this young brother could have went to an NBA player, could have wrote an NBA player. Well, St. Louis doesn't have an NBA team, but they have a football team. And they have a baseball team. But let's just say he was any NBA team. This kid should be able to write a letter to Dame Lillard, LeBron James, any of those woke NBA players. Who think he could do that? Write them a letter and say, look, I want to start a business. Can you, you don't have to give me no money. Because they always worried about getting scammed when it's a nigga. Can you just help me? Can I send you a business proposal? And can you help me? I'm 11 years old. I, I live in the, the most violent city in the Midwest. Which is saying something. Which is saying something. Which is a feat. I live in the most violent city in the Midwest. Can you help me start a business? How many think them NBA players would 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 help this dude? How many you think one of them NBA players would help this guy? How many think this guy could have went to the, an actor, a woke actor, a woke NBA player? We know he couldn't go on the Black Lives Matter, so we're not even gonna mention that. Maybe if he had a um, maybe if he <laughs> he had the the low down on a on a property. <laughs> He has some inside information on the, some some new hot properties. Maybe he could have got the attention of Black Lives Matter. But who think this kid could have, you know, gone to the NBA? And I know that the people will say they do a lot of charity. They give bikes away at rec centers and shit like that. Who would help this guy start a business? This eleven year old start a business. Today. I said, Mom, can you help me one day to start my own business? And she said, Yes. So when do you want to start? I said, um, today. Meet Joshua Danrich. He's also known as Mr. Fresh. He's the face of the business. The 11-year-old has his own line of car fresheners. Money time, Mr. Fresh, FTF. Now, we just did a story last week, although it was a lie. <laughs> although it was a bold-faced, blatant, unadulterated lie. And there were no <laughs> retractions after the truth came out. 
But we did a story last week about a young blackish ish man, young blackish guy. <laughs> Who was allegedly pulled over for having air freshener in his car. <laughs> hanging from his window. Yeah, air freshener hanging from his window. The cop they chased him down and shot him. Now we found out that that wasn't true. Expired. Bad tags. Then ran his name. He had a warrant for robbing a black woman and choking her during a robbery with a gun put a gun to her head and choked her and he got a warrant for that white man said you can't do that maybe you will kind of do that if y'all didn't if y'all want to go do that y'all go start your own country where y'all can do that and, and it don't be a problem white man said in my country that's a problem <laughs> But it's interesting how, because I tell you we live in the twilight zone, it's just interesting how that air freshener story <laughs> took off, because that's what made it took off. He was shot because he had air freshener in his car. Oh my God. Black people, you can't have air freshener. Remember the first couple of days? You can't even have an air freshener hanging from your window. From your rear view window. Rearview mirror, I mean, you can't have air freshener hanging from your rearview mirror. That's how bad it is in this country. That's what got the story, vaulted it. And now we have another story about air freshener. Meet Joshua Danrich. He's also known as Mr. Fresh. He's the face of the business. The 11 year old has his own line of car fresheners. Money sign, Mr. Fresh, FTF. He's a pretty good salesman, too. My mom helped me to come up with my game plan. There you go. All right, man. He's not only the front man. The business guy is determined and focused. Joshua also makes his seven cents himself. And I put my heart and my soul into my air freshness. But he won't tell me much more than that. It's a trade secret. What isn't a secret is his message. You see, FRESH is an acronym. Faith to rescue every son from hurt. Our mission is from emotional, mental, physical, financial maturity, as well as self-esteem and voice. He said, I want to spread positivity one bottle of air freshener at a time. He's been able to spread his message in front of some large audiences, including Good Morning America. Which is the best experience of my life. All the things he does, it still amazes me that he's my son. Like, I sit back in awe. Josh wants other kids to see him, hear him, and follow him. Keep striving, keep going, and you will succeed. Business is making him a role model. If I can do it, so can you. A kid with a purpose. He wanted to leave a footprint, like right now. Not, not that footprint that you remember me later. He say, Mom, I want to leave a footprint so they see me now. That's my... The one and only, an exclusive look at the moments after an NBA player was stabbed at a Miami strip club. The video just released by police. Now, this player made a lot of news a few years ago when he was in Milwaukee when he had a fake just an egregious like police encounter where he completely provoked the police and completely agitated the situation and did every possible thing wrong and now he's attacked outside of a club but during that police encounter in the weeks and days after that, he made a big deal, Black Lives Matter, and tried to make, he became a pre, a pre-George Floyd, a pre-Jacob Blake poster boy for Black Lives Matter. This guy right here, the same guy who was attacked by a Klan's member, I'm sure, or a white supremacist, or a Capitol rioter, or a Trump supporter outside of a strip club. <laughs> Now, I wanted to see if this story of him getting stabbed. Because we know knives aren't deadly weapons. So, you know, not, knives don't do no damage. <laughs> Look how he's bleeding like a stuck pig. I wonder if this, this, this 
this story of him getting stabbed by a goddamn Wakandan outside of a strip club or make as much media attention as him provoking and agitating a confrontation with cops two years ago. Moments after an NBA player was stabbed at a Miami strip club, the video just released by police. That player was attacked in the parking lot of that nightclub, and Local 10 News reporter Christian Elarosa is live now to show us the rest of that exclusive video. Christian. Calvin, it's difficult to watch, borderline difficult to watch, some might say, because the NBA star Sterling Brown is covered in blood after getting in a fight outside the booby trap. Where the ambulance at, bro? A very bloody Sterling Brown. Buddy, you know how you got hit? This Miami-Dade police body camera video shows a 26-year-old Houston Rockets basketball player after reportedly falling victim to an assault last week outside the Booby Trap Strip Club in Miami. I'm not, I'm not tripping on that. I'm trying to get your help. Officers Look at this great guy. Even now, stabbed up. Getting into a little spat and being difficult with the cops that arrived on the scene who are going to find the guy who did this to him and put him in a cage. Being a jerk and an a-hole to the people who respond who are probably the only reason that the guys left. The guy or the guys who did this to him left because they knew that this guy was coming. So they couldn't finish the job. <laughs> and then these guys get here to pr protect him and he's being difficult with them. NBA player, Houston Rockets. Outside the booby trap strip club in Miami. I'm not, I'm not tripping on that. No, I don't, I, I'm trying to get you help. Officers say Brown and another man who was with him at the time did not cooperate with their investigation into what happened. There was a group of guys that got into it, and I guess one of the guys was really beat up. The man who's with Sterling is heard saying he was the target of a robbery. A Miami fire rescue team is seen treating Sterling, his head heavily bandaged, before being transported to Jackson Memorial Hospital with serious cuts on his face. Wait, clean cut. He has a clean, clean cut. Very serious cuts of which he is still recovering. Uh, we should also say he was reportedly with several of his teammates here at the booby trap. In fact, one of the men that's seen in that video is one of his teammates, or appears to be a Kevin Porter Jr. No arrest. Have one stabbed up, the other one had his wallet stolen. <laughs> in the what, what everything that's going on with the NBA, where they're commenting on every police interaction that goes viral. Where's LeBron to comment on this? Why LeBron ain't say nothing about this, man? That's messed up. Two NBA players that have been kneeling and pontificating and prostrating and virtue signaling for the last year and a half about brothers getting shot for no reason <laughs> at all other than the fact that they black or getting the knee to the neck. Were robbed and stabbed up at a club by some niggas. And it's wrong. And I'm LeBron James, and I want to say that, y'all, this is wrong what happened. And, and we thank the police officers for coming on the scene and protecting these guys, even though these guys were very belligerent and hostile and aggressive towards the, the first responders and the police officers that came on the scene to help them. Where's ESPN reporting this? Oh my God. Could you imagine if a, if, a, if a basketball player, if a white fan had put something on Twitter or wrote a letter to one of these guys telling them that they don't like the way they divide the country? That would have been a six-day story. But we get 
A couple of them go to a club, get stabbed up and robbed. We got footage of it. <laughs> of the aftermath. And nobody gonna touch this story. And nobody gonna say nothing about it. No players, nobody. Nobody gonna even speak out about the violence that, that it was. Nobody gonna say nothing about it. Then the players are hostile towards the police. These are the kneelers. These are the ones talking about the police all the damn time. <coughs> These are the ones talking about the police all the time. So this is Sterling Brown. He's pulled up in front of the pharmacy drugstore. Diagonal. You know how the, the parking spaces look? They, they come... They're, they're, they're next to each other. He parked across them, including the handicapped spot. So he just pulled up and just parked across, taking up three, four parking spaces, including a handicapped space. And this is him coming out of the store. an entirely empty parking lot and he decides to park across the parking spaces. <laughs> he just pulled in and just parked horizontal in like three or four vertical facing parking spaces and went in the store. It was in there long enough that a cop was just like, what the hell, that looks straight. It looked like a getaway car for a robbery. It looked like somebody pulled up, went in the drugstore with the robbery and came out. It was just waiting to come right out. If I was a cop and I seen that, I would be like, that looks strange. And then I'd wait there for a minute after like five, ten minutes. I'd be like, oh, this is really strange. And then if I was over there inspecting it, looking around, and the guy came out, I would definitely it'd be like, yo, what the fuck? What's up? And then if he would try to act like he was just going to still get in the car and just disregard me, like he was he was like, all right, dude, whatever, just move out of the way. He, get, he was just, he just going to get in the car. He was just ignoring the cop and just going to get in the car and drive off. It's like, and the NBA went hysterical about this. This was such a outcry, outrageous. They couldn't believe they treated the black guy player like this. And you can play in the NBA and you still ain't nothing but an N-word to cops. And it's crazy. 
This the same guy got stabbed at the club in Houston. Same, you know I mean, that stabbed at the club. The same Houston rocket player that got stabbed at the club. So now he's done made a simple situation. A, a, a situation where he could have came up and been like, oh, my bad, officer. I, I, you know, my bad. I just bonehead thing on my part. Sorry. And I said, hey, man, just be careful. Don't do that again. And it would have been over. But because he tried to just get in the car and ignore the officer and get in the car, and then he got all of in the officer's face, it changed the dynamic of the situation. And liberals and, uh, and Negroes is going to be like, they doing all this because he parked in sideways in some vertical parking spaces. No, he's not doing all this because of that. doing all this because... He escalated it. And now you got like six cops there and he going through all this. And everybody trying to say that this is because he's black. This is happening because he's black. And you gonna tell me that if he would have just came out and been like, and seen the cop standing there, the cop would have asked him like, "Yo, why'd you park like this?" He could have been like, "Man, look, man, I, my bad. I'm sorry." <laughs> he feel like he shouldn't have to answer to anybody about anything. He about big six, seven, big old tall dude driving a, a you know, a foreign sports car. I'm just gonna pull up. In the in the parking lot, park horizontally in some vertical spaces. I ain't gonna take the five seconds to take the park in the parking space. Forget forget the handicapped people that gotta park in the handicapped space. Forget anybody else who wanna. Uh, it's all about me. And then when the cop, when I come out and see a cop, I'm not even gonna recognize. I'm just gonna get in my car while he's talking to me. And you gonna tell me that there was that this is this happened? He got tased and taken to the ground because he was black, <laughs> which I find offensive. Cause you said being black is being a jack, <laughs> being an idiot. Now he is two years later after a whole Black Lives Matter movement, after kneeling on the court, after all that crap. Stabbed up by some Negroes at the club, arguing with the responding officers and giving them a hard time. And the mainstream media ain't gonna touch this. That this boy got stabbed up. You should see the coverage when the cops allegedly assaulted him. It was all over the place. Now you don't see nothing. Milwaukee's police chief revealed officers were disciplined over a controversial altercation with NBA player Sterling Brown. Newly released body cam video shows the incident in January that started with a parking violation. Officers can be seen subduing Brown and using a stun gun on him. The video appears to contradict an initial police account that reportedly said Brown was uncooperative. Marco Morgan is outside. Look at the premise of their whole... <laughs> their whole little expose of the Milwaukee police. The premise of it. This contradicts reports from the Milwaukee Police Department that Sterling Brown was uncooperative. They watched the body camera and said that it contradicts the report. That he was uncooperative. He parked across two Handicapped parking spaces horizontally. 
got caught. It would have been fine if he didn't get caught. Got caught. The officer's waiting at his car when he comes out. He literally just ignores the officer as the officer is addressing him. Standing, the officer's literally standing in front of his door. He goes like through the officer and just starts opening the door like he's going to get in the car without saying anything. Then he gets up in the officer's face. Like, you know, all up in his... Give me, like, give me three feet, homie. And they say that contradicts. And then from that point on, he, 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 he ignored every command, every instruction that they gave him. He did the exact opposite until he was finally tased and taken to the ground. And they're saying that that contradicts the report that the officers made when they came back to the station. It was like, yeah, this guy was uncooperative. We literally live in the twilight zone. Doing Brown and using a stun gun on him, the video appears to contradict an initial police account that reportedly said Brown was uncooperative. DeMarco Morgan is outside Milwaukee Police Headquarters. DeMarco, good morning. Good morning to you. This is not the first time the Milwaukee Police Department has been the focus of questionable use of force. Sterling Brown now says he plans to file a lawsuit sometime next week to hopefully prevent something like this from happening again in the near future. Our department conducted an investigation into the incident which revealed members acted inappropriately and those members were recently disciplined. On Wednesday, newly appointed Milwaukee Police Chief Alfonso Morales apologized for his officers' actions in the January incident. It started as what police described as a routine check around 2 a.m. told you to back up. A police officer had spotted NBA player Sterling Brown's vehicle parked across two handicapped lanes at a Walgreens parking lot. Hey, I got it in your face. Right. Really? At first, Brown can be seen calmly talking to police. But once backup arrives, the situation intensifies. Brown is thrown to the ground. Taser, taser, taser! Hit with a taser and arrested. He was briefly booked in jail, but released a short time later. No charges were filed. Hours after the incident, the Milwaukee Bucks rookie played in an NBA game with bruises on his face. After the game, he refused to comment on what happened. The case has placed added pressure on a department already under scrutiny. In 2016, riots broke out after an officer shot and killed Seville Smith after a traffic stop. Smith had a gun, but in a split-second decision, an officer shot and killed him after Smith apparently tossed his weapon aside. And Being an officer sucks. Okay? It's horrible. You chasing this brother, I mean, a straight... You know, a hoodlum, a, a gangster, a, sh a young shooter. You chasing him, I think it was like a shooting or something. They got on the guy's tail, the guy fled, jumped out the car or something, ran down the alley. Something happened where he, it was, it was a very legitimate reason why they were on them. Guy runs down the alley. Officers chasing behind him. You see the officers black. You see those black hands, right? Black officer chasing behind him. At the last second, I guess the officers catching up to him. He turns around and pulls out. The, by that time, the gun was in his waist. So he pulls out the gun. <laughs> he reaches in his waistband and pulls out the gun. <laughs> the officer don't know what's going on, but an extendo clip on it. All she didn't know he was reaching in his waistband to pull the gun out to throw it. All she just seen him reaching in his waistband. All she chasing him down a dark alley in Blackistani and jungles. The guy gets to a fence. All she's right on his tail. The guy reaches his waistband and pulls the gun out. What is the officer supposed to do? And he's not dealing with, like, the student body president at Howard University. This is, like, literally a shooter, a gangster. He shot him. And that's being linked 
to that 2019 incident with this basketball player, Sterling Brown, where he agitated the cops and took a small situation and made it big and got tased and roughed up a little bit. They're linking those two incidents. This is on his face. After the game, he refused to comment on what happened. So it's being handled. The case has placed added pressure on a department already under scrutiny. In 2016, riots broke out after an officer shot and killed a civil Smith after a traffic stop. Smith had a gun, but in a split-second decision, an officer shot and killed him after Smith apparently tossed his weapon aside. At last year, the city settled a lawsuit for $2.3 million for the 2014 killing of Dontre Hamilton, a mentally ill man who was agitated by an officer's unlawful pat-down. The officer shot Hamilton 14 times during their altercation. Now, Brown released a statement yesterday saying, and I quote, what should have been a simple parking ticket turned into an attempt at police intimidation, followed by the unlawful use of physical force. As for the officers involved, the police chief has not said how they were disciplined. Gail? Yeah, very disturbing story there. Thank you very much, Jamarco. Now, we're supposed to believe that if a white guy had parked across two handicapped spaces and gotten caught, which is just rare, like a cop got to be you know, just be happy to be rolling by when you did it. But that people don't park in handicap. How many times do you see people park in handicap spaces that don't have that placard in their window? You never really see it. Like, take a note the next time you go to the Walmart or the Target or wherever. Take, look and see, like, how many people you see parked in a handicap space that don't have the handicap tags or the handicap placard hanging in the window. And then... T take a note how many times you see people cross parked horizontally across both of the handicapped spaces. <laughs> and then think that if, if the white person did it, would a cop be like waiting outside and then be to see a white man come out and be like, oh, you wink, wink, you're one of us. <laughs> I thought you was the black dude. Go on, get on out of here. <laughs> fellow white person <laughs> my white bro own brain <laughs> hurry up and get up out of here before some black people see see me letting you go for this for parking in these handicapped spaces <laughs> so we must believe that a white dude would have just got away with it and he only messing with this guy because he black <laughs> and then we find out this the same guy bleeding like a step pig outside of a Miami strip club, the booby trap, after he got stabbed up by some Negroes, fussing with the cops who responded to the scene, and giving them a hard time. So is it safe to say that, look, there may be a pattern here? Is it okay to make an observation? Because you don't recognize the patterns as racist or cooning. Because I'm black, so it's not racist. Recognizing patterns is cooning. <sighs> These are NBA players. These are the same dudes that's going to kneel and virtue signal and tell you about yourself and how racist the country is and how we need the people need to do better and these are the people that got something to say about every viral video and it's always some whiny virtue signaling gloom doom and gloom the world is coming to and the sky is falling everything's bad point of view it's never something good it's always doom and gloom from these guys when it comes to a social issue. And this dude stabbed up outside of a club arguing with the cops. And this is who this is who, who we gotta listen to about social issues. See on the one and only an exclusive look at the moments after an NBA player was stabbed at a Miami strip club. The video just released by police. That player was attacked in the parking lot of that nightclub. And local 10 news reporter Christian Elarosa is live now to show us the rest of that exclusive video. Christian. 
Calvin, it's difficult to watch, borderline difficult to watch, some might say, because the NBA star Sterling Brown is covered in blood after getting in a fight outside the booby trap. What an ambulance at, bro. A very bloody Sterling Brown. Buddy, you know how you got hit? This Miami-Dade police body camera video shows a 26-year-old Houston Rockets basketball player after reportedly falling victim to an assault last week outside the Booby Trap Strip Club in Miami. I'm not, I'm not tripping on that. I'm trying to get you help. Officers say Brown and another man who was with him at the time did not cooperate with their investigation into what happened. There was a group of guys that got into it. The man who's with Sterling is heard saying he was the target of a robbery. A Miami fire rescue team is seen treating Sterling, his head heavily bandaged, before being transported to Jackson Memorial Hospital with serious cuts on his face. serious cuts of which he is still recovering uh we should also say he was reportedly with several of his teammates here at the booby trap in fact one of the men that's seen in that video is one of his teammates or appears to be a kevin porter jr no arrest have been made we're live in miami just west of alapata i'm christian de la rosa local 10 news Pretty